All right, here we go. Question number five of our college algebra homework number six in my lab math says to determine whether the function is one to one. If it is, find its inverse. And so we have a rational function that I've copied down up here. One of the ways that you can check for one to one is you can look at the graph. And that is real easy to do with Desmos. So let's with Desmos, let's look at the graph real quick. It's 3 over x plus 7. And if we look at that graph, you can see that every horizontal line that I could possibly draw is going to touch this graph only once. In fact, we do have a horizontal asymptote here where the graph doesn't exist, but every other horizontal line is going to touch only once. So that's one way to tell if it's one-to-one -one is if it passes the horizontal line test. There is another way to check algebraically, and that is to check and see does f of negative x equal to f of x. And so if you don't have access to Desmos, uh, you can check this algebraically. So to uh, evaluate f of negative x, what that says, it says to take your function and replace x with negative x. Okay, and then the original function, 3 over x plus 7, we want to know, do these uh, equal? Are these the same thing? And so we can do a little cross multiply if we want to. That's going to be 3 times x plus 7, going this way, equals 3 times negative x plus 7. And then simplifying that, we get 3x plus 21, and that's going to be negative 3x plus 21. And then do you notice at this point, it's pretty easy to see that these are not the same because the coefficients of x are not the same. So if f of negative x is not equal to f of x, then the function is 1 to 1. If they are equal, then it's not one-to-one. -one. So this is definitely one-to-one. -one. And now that we know that it's one-to-one, -one, they want us to find the inverse of the function. And so again, just to make a note up here, to find the inverse in my world, in using my technique, we're going to use the 3S method which is substitute, switch, and solve. The three S's, substitute, switch, and solve. So if I copy down the original function, the first S says substitute. That means that we want to replace f of x with y. And then the second S is switch. We want to switch x and y. And then the third S is solve. We want to solve for Y. And so the easiest way to solve this equation for Y is to take this X and F it up. We want to fraction it up so that we have a proportion and we can cross multiply. Okay, so we're going to have X times Y plus 7. 3 times 1 is 3. Remember, we're trying to solve for y, so the next step, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to divide both sides by x, because if I can get rid of this x here, then I won't have anything to distribute, and then I won't need my parentheses. So now this is just y plus 7 equals 3 over x, and then I can bring over the 7. Okay, so remember, once you get that y by itself, then we can use our inverse notation. This is now the inverse function, 3 over x minus 7. And so this should be our inverse function. Now, before I put that into my lab math, what I'm going to do is come over here to Desmos and check it. So I'm going to put as g of x my inverse function, 3 over x minus 7. And so there is that function. Can y'all see that? 
that looks kind of pretty. And then I'm going to check for symmetry, because if it really is the inverse, it'll be symmetric about the line y equals x. And look at that. Look at that. Do y'all see that this line splits that so that the blue and the purple, if I fold that across, look the same? That is beautiful. Do you see that symmetry? Mm -mm. All right, so that proves or that verifies that I have the correct inverse function. 3 over x minus 7. Bam. So I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them in the comment section below, or you can text me. And thanks for watching.